I've been uh, designated a threat to national security and as such I'm not allowed into the country. This was when I was 18 and I first came to Russia. I thought if I say something wrong, I'm going to be labelled as a spy. I've reported throughout Vladimir Putin's presidency on the gradual crushing of rights and freedoms. Do you feel safe now, comfortable now, like speaking openly? No, never, never. I don't feel safe here in this country. Last year, Mr. Putin's biggest critic was poisoned. Now, Alexei Navalny's team have fled abroad as the repression reaches new heights. It is very bad and it could become much worse anytime. This is the story of my expulsion from Russia and what it says about the country I've been forced to leave. When I first came to this Moscow park, the statues were in pieces lying on the ground. The Soviet Union had just collapsed, and as Russia embraced new freedoms, symbols of a repressive past were being dumped here. Like Dzhinsky, the founder of the secret police. But lately, it's felt like Russia's moving in reverse. When I saw it, I remember vividly that he had the word executioner painted across the, the, the pedestal there. And that's now been cleaned up, and he's, uh, he's standing back on his perch. And it's one of the successors to this man who's decided at the FSB that I'm a threat to national security here. The border guards had me sign this to say I'd been warned of the ban. For the end date, they scrawled indefinite. Apparently, for whatever reason, um, that's it. My whole story with Russia is over. And yet, after 12 hours, I was suddenly released and let into Moscow. They let me in, for now. But only to pack. None of that has been explained to me yet, but a reliable source did tell me I'm on a sanctions list for anti-Russian activity. I knew that the FSB had me on their records as a threat. I sort of thought that if I said something wrong or revealed too much or protested too loudly, then suddenly, like, I'm going to be labelled publicly a national security threat. I'm going to be labelled as a spy. Moscow looks a relaxed and carefree place on the surface. And it can be if you're not into politics. Anastasia is, though. She's an opposition activist from the southern city of Rostov visiting the capital with her children for their first trip away since her house arrest was lifted. Anastasia was prosecuted as a security threat. They blame me being um, not a patriot, but being an agent of other country. Um, so if you don't support uh, the uh, president, uh, if you criticize uh, authorities, then you are not actually a good citizen for this country and you have to leave or you have to spend your time in uh, prison and that's it. We first met when the single mum was banned from leaving home for two years. Anastasia was accused of links to a pro-democracy group based in Britain. The key evidence was a flag declaring her fed up of Vladimir Putin. Hello. Hello. <laughs> we met up again a few days before I had to leave Russia. Do you feel 
safe now, comfortable now, like speaking openly? No, never, never. I don't feel safe here in this country. I am afraid. I am afraid for my children, for my mom who are next to me. I don't want to go to jail, of course. I am afraid of uh, police sometimes. You, you, you feel uh, pessimistic, yeah? I personally, right now, I feel pessimistic. Russia seems like it's closing off from the outside world and, and people like you are the victims of that, I guess. Yeah, it was a time when political uh, activists were under repression, but now uh, lawyers, journalists, uh, comics, uh, and uh, some musicians, everyone actually is under repression. Officially, I was ordered out because a Russian reporter wasn't allowed to stay in London. But that was two years ago, and no one made a fuss until now. HIV, corruption, there's the protests, Belarus, Uzbekistan, football. I like a bit of football. The World Cup, that was amazing. People were really friendly. I got Someone ran up to me in the street on the square and she kissed me <laughs> for coming to Saransk. <laughs> file on treason and spies. I don't even remember which one this was. So many of them. Half of the people that we reported on are still in prison. <laughs> Nemtsov is dead. I suppose I could just chuck it all away, but it just feels like an archive of a country, of a time, of a period of time, which hopefully won't be this miserable forever. <laughs> Mash can just stand here, guard my place. Independent Russian journalism is also under attack, like never before. The team at Dorsht cover stories that state-controlled media won't touch. They've already been forced off TV and onto the internet. Now the channel has been added to a blacklist of media declared as foreign agents. The journalists have to mark all their work with a warning. This news is from a source that's hostile to Russia. The status of foreign agents means that we, Dorst, we are enemies of the, of the state. All the businesses, all the companies, all the partners, no one wants to be associated with the enemies of the state. Now, that's exactly what they wanted to, to do with us, to say it's not safe to watch them, it's not safe to talk to them, it's not safe to work with them. That's exactly what they want. Outside the FSB headquarters, other journalists protested in solidarity. You're afraid of the truth, this sign says. But even one person protests are banned in Russia these days. Dorsht is still on air, though, with that mandatory warning. In the headlines when we were there, an activist under house arrest for tweeting about a protest for Alexei Navalny. President Putin's biggest critic is in prison. His entire organization has been banned as extremists. It's uh, really strange now in news bulletins like this because the presenter, every time she refers to Alexei Navalny or to his anti-corruption foundation, she has to remind viewers that they've been labelled extremists and foreign agents, the same as this TV channel. And the list of people that journalists now have to use that disclaimer for is growing all the time. There is the understanding in the Kremlin that the pretending of uh, being democracy is over. We don't need these uh, um, independent organizations, uh, human rights activists, independent media. We just don't need them here anymore. It is very bad and it could become much worse anytime. The Kremlin was my view for a long time. But its view of journalists, of the West, and of internal Russian critics has really darkened. This is my favorite. This is when I was 18 and I first came to Russia. There's a 
pre-student. I was learning Russian then. The country was opening up to the world. It was a time of new hopes, but real hardship too. That's the uh, Russian military base in Chechnya in the early 2000s during the Second War. So our basic mission was to get away from our minders so we could actually talk to people without them listening. I began reporting from Russia just after Vladimir Putin came to power. I didn't come to Russia to tell bad stories about Russia. I didn't come here to undermine the Russian state, which is this kind of mentality that they appear to have. I came here to talk to Russian people and Russian officials and to try to understand this country and to explain it to other people. Vladimir Putin's presenting this as just another working visit, but of course it's so much more than that. There have been dozens of people detained here on Tverskaya Street. I felt like by singling me out specifically, I felt like they were saying they didn't like what I was reporting, they didn't like the job I was doing, and it was easier for them just to get rid of me. Russia's getting rid of political rivals too. Alexei Navalny's team don't want me to reveal where we met for safety reasons, just that it's in Europe. With Navalny himself behind bars, all his closest allies are now abroad. We found them preparing for a live stream as usual, but far from the surveillance, the police searches and the criminal charges they face in Russia. Ivan's father was already arrested for fraud. He calls his dad a political hostage. When I started working in 2014, he told me that they will send you. It was different than others. Yes, I was going to ask him. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Navalny dubbed Vladimir Putin's party crooks and thieves. He infuriated the authorities. His team's anti-corruption investigations rack up tens of millions of views. This one identifies a gaudy residence as Putin's palace, though the Kremlin denies any connection. Last year, Navalny was poisoned with nerve agents. When he returned from life-saving treatment abroad, he was arrested at the border. We kind of free. We don't Masha and Lucy spent months under house arrest for tweets calling people out in protest at his treatment. Do you think they've just given up, the Kremlin has just given up on the idea of democracy in Russia? We had to speak online after my expulsion. <sighs> You're joking. <laughs> <laughs> You're speaking about democracy, come on. <laughs> A decade ago, this punk prayer got Masha sent to jail. Pussy Riot were charged with inciting religious hatred then. But even she tells me things today are far worse. Ten years ago, that was just uh, uh, several political prisoners. Now we have thousands. Uh, it's just people who wrote, uh, uh, who wrote some, I don't know, tweets or posts or went to small single demonstrations. They, um, they're getting huge sentences. You think people got used to it? Yeah, people got used to it and um, it's uh, no longer a shock. It's like everyday news. They poison people, they kill people. They, they started the war with, uh, with their own people, with Russian people. And uh, nobody in the West, I think, almost nobody, do not understand what is happening here. <laughs> If it is a war, then Team Navalny have retreated, but not surrendered. They can broadcast from abroad, and they do plan more investigations. But the pushback is intensifying.
my own link to Russia has been broken. But Vladimir Putin, the power in this land for over two decades now, is going nowhere. He's just got the constitution changed so he can stay on in the Kremlin. I mean, I don't want to go, but I'll go, obviously. I mean, initially it was devastating, now it just makes me angry. <laughs> because it's not my choice. And also because it's just wrong for journalism. I do worry about what's happening to the country I'm leaving behind and to the journalists and to the just people that I've met who, who, um, who I think would like to live differently. Ready? So I've been forced from a country I've called home for almost a third of my life. Whose story I've tried to explain to the world. But as Russia increasingly sees enemies all around, it's now added me to the list. Thank you.